Hi guys, how are you? Merry Christmas! I hope your Christmas preparations are going well and you either just about to have your Christmas meal or you've just had it and laying down with full bellies. I thought that Christmas is a great opportunity to do a long overdue Q&A, which I was intending to do for a long time, but just didn't work out. Now I'm logging into Instagram where I've asked you to ask me anything. There are some really good questions. So without further ado, let's go straight into them. Let's start with an easy one. Nuts3LL asks, when you came to Scotland, what Scottish accent did you find most difficult to understand? I'm I'm from Glasgow and I have Polish friends and when speaking to her I have to do an Edinburgh accent as it is much slower than my Glaswegian accent. I came to Scotland about four years ago. Before then I was living in Newcastle for six years minus one year abroad which I did in Australia and I have to say <laughs> coming to Edinburgh and trying to understand the Scottish people it was a complete nightmare. I had no idea that there can be something more difficult than Geordie accent but I was wrong. It it gets even worse because the further north Scotland you go, the thicker the accent gets. Glaswegian accent is uncomprehensible to me till today. My stepdad is Scottish and he also has the ability to speak both accents. What Scottish accent did I find most difficult? Um, any of them that I don't understand. <laughs> till today when I'm on the phone with someone or when people are drunk, even those who normally speak clear accent Honestly, it, it just gets funnier and funnier because I can understand nothing. Well, it's very hard to bring them to mind. This is the thing. It's only like, it's all right when you're not going to be and happy, happy as us. Beauty Everywhere asks, what's your horoscope and what does your tattoo mean? My zodiac sign is Leo and my tattoo is an old tattoo. I am really considering to <laughs> do something about it. It says the power is within. I've done it when I finished university, when I had to overcome a lot of life struggles. So I've realized, yeah, I have all the power until some time ago I realized that, you know, I don't know everything and I don't have all the power. So I think I might be thinking about changing it a little bit. Hourglass Vintage 34 asks, do you ever get companies asking to do sponsorship deals with you, especially beauty companies? Love your videos and do a sugar scrap now instead of anything else. I'm super happy that you like the videos. Uh, the answer to this question is uh, yes. Uh, I have a lot of requests uh, to do sponsorship deals and reviews, tons of it, but there are two reasons I haven't accepted any yet. First of all, I want to cooperate with uh, products and companies that I really want to cooperate with. For example, my dream would be to work with Hadalabo and I have asked them if they want to work with me, but they said they prefer um, Asian bloggers. The companies that have contacted contacted me in the past were introducing me to some new products that I don't know and I guess it's okay to try from time to time. I will try to be a little bit more open to these but uh, so far I've had uh, my mindset on very specific things and only if someone from uh, these companies would contact me I would accept it. The reason number two is that last year as much as I would have loved to be a little bit more involved in that scene, uh, my health wasn't uh, letting me to do so. I just needed to take a step back and uh, focus on other things that are a little bit more important. Scroll to layer data asks what's your resolutions next year? So I kind of have three. First one is to grow my hair. I want to grow them till my waist. They're missing about four or five centimeters to reach that goal. Second one is to tone up a little bit. Last year I've had a little bit of uh, work to do on my health, so I've tried to work out on a regular basis but it still wasn't as much as I would like to, so this year as I'm feeling much better I would love to um, do more of these. And number three is to do even more and better things on YouTube as well as um, growing a little bit of my Instagram because I wasn't very active uh, last years but I think there is a good opportunity over there to share good stuff with you guys. Wenny Rosely asks what is the bigger, I guess, biggest problem this year and how is the way to handle it? So my biggest challenge last year, which started 
a year before actually was the uh, painful reali realization that the situation in my family, in my childhood affected my life very very much realizing the extent of damage and realizing that I can't go without asking for help was a huge deal for me in the home I grew up in there was a lot of alcohol addictions and toxicity all over the place which had a very destructive effect on me which I didn't realize until I was about 27. I reached out for help to a psychologist and then I started attending meetings for adult children of alcoholics and people from dysfunctional homes which was an absolute life-changing thing. This past year have been taking little baby steps to learn walking in a healthy framework healthy ways which I just didn't know before. It was probably the hardest thing I have ever done in my life but it was so worth it because I feel so good now. I feel every day just gets better and better. This leads me to another question from Agushasha. She asks what would you advise fellow adult children of alcoholics most important things? So I thought about this question and I think there are three things I would advice. First one, go to a therapy now. Like, don't wait because it was the single most uh, important thing, be the best thing, <laughs> the, the best investment in yourself, in your future that you can ever do. If you even have suspicions that uh, something wasn't quite, quite right in your childhood, meetings like this can clear up and straighten up a lot of knots in your heart and a lot of thoughts in your head. So go now. Second of all, the chances are you will cry a bucket after bucket of tears. Let yourself cry the brains out because that's what it is all about. Allow yourself that period of time to completely just let everything out. And the third thing I would say is that no matter how far you will fall off the track of getting healthy, how many meetings you will skip, how many times you will think it's too difficult, no matter how often and or how many times you have doubts like this commit to always coming back on track to healing life on the other side is so worth it and i promise you i promise you i promise you it gets better and i promise you you can make it kunal0101 asks one of the most common questions i'm getting asked are you single i am not going to answer this question because I have decided a while ago that I am going to keep my private life away from social media. It comes down to the fact that I am coming from a dysfunctional family and such family affects your ability to build healthy relationships because um, how you relate in your closest family uh, sets you a framework for lifetime how people relate to each other and if this is toxic then the only thing you can do later in life is to repeat the unhealthy things so building relationships all of this is not natural for me it's uh, hard work it's something that i have had to learn and take it very slowly and it's a very delicate subject for me that's why i've decided to completely stay away from discussing my private life uh, my love life I'm just gonna tell you that I'm happy and things that things are going well and when I'm ready if I'm ready I am going to talk about it but right now please respect the privacy of myself and of people who are close to my heart Ashley1780 asks how many languages can you speak I can speak fluently two languages Polish and English and it's, it ties in with another question about whether I'm still learning German, I had to stop last year because of me investing in my health, but I want to go back to it. Laura Lee Hola also asks, what do you most miss about Poland and do you consider ever moving back? So the older I get, the more I miss little things about Poland, predominantly the climate, the weather, especially in the spring and the summer but having said that i have never considered moving back i don't see myself living in poland i come to visit a few times a year but i just don't think this is a place where i can truly grow and develop myself 
maybe one day when I'm uh, retired. But as for moving back in my working years, I can't even imagine it. In fact, it's my worst nightmare. The same Laura also asks, was it hard to transition from uni to a full-time job? Actually, it was a blessing. <laughs> I had full-time uni and I was working part-time as a waitress. I was working weekends, evenings, and then I had to study. So going uh, to full-time, just one proper job, nine to five, where I have regular schedule, where I have better money, where I have free weekends was a total blessing. I hope I don't have to go back to uni again. F. Kurakova asks, how did you get into skincare and face massage and when? So I got into uh, Asian skincare when I was about 21. That's when I went to Australia for my placement year and I met uh, a group of Asian girls who introduced me to a completely different way of taking care of the skin. I realized that a lot of concepts are just awesome, very different to what I knew from the West and I started exploring especially Korean skincare, which uh, led me to face massage. One of the beauty standards in Asia is a V-shaped face, which is having sharp little chin. I quickly figured that this concept would work well for a Western uh, Caucasian face too. Back then I had a little bit rounder cheeks, so I decided to try it out. Very quickly realized it's working. That's when I started trying different massage for preventing uh, mimic lines, smile lines, around eyes lines, uh, anti-aging face massage. I realized there is a whole world of these uh, face massage which are just very fascinating for me. Jane Tonda asks, which massage would you recommend to start as a total beginner? I hope 30 is not too late to start. Uh, no, 30 isn't too late. It's a good age to start. In fact, I think I probably started quite early. I've recorded a few versions of face massage, uh, which would be really good to start with. I think um, the five minute uh, eyes, uh, smile and forehead wrinkles massage, that is a good place to start. I'm going to leave you a link somewhere below maybe or somewhere on the screen. It's not like there is one specific thing you have to do to start with. It's just to address the areas that are the most problematic on your skin and start there. Rayleigh Arby asks, what is your opinion on retinoids in skincare and what is your current exercise routine? I'm planning to make a separate video about retinoids and retinols because they are scientifically proven ingredients that help with anti-aging. But from the Asian point of view, they cause your skin to become more matte and uh, it uh, peels your skin, which is not a desired effect from the uh, Korean point of view. So actually, uh, retinoids are not very popular in Asia at all. Um, I will explore it in a video I will make, so uh, watch this space. The second part of the question was about my exercise routine. That's also something I'm being asked a lot along with what's my diet. So I try to work out at least three times a week for about 45 minutes. I love the uh, workout routines by Eva Hodakowska. She's a Polish personal trainer, but I also like to go for a run. So I usually do either two runs and one video of Eva Hodakowska or two Eva Hodakowska and one run. As for my diet, I don't eat meat, I'm a vegetarian. I eat fish sometimes though. I don't eat dairy that much, cheese very, very occasionally. One thing I really like and it's my guilty pleasure is a butter. I like buttered potatoes. So I always kind of have butter in my fridge, but I don't eat it very, very often. My recent discovery was to rebalance my meals in such a way that I eat my main portion at lunchtime and then when I go home about five I only have a light soup or a green smoothie. This made me feel very light, much more energetic. I don't feel so tired in the evenings anymore. Also, even if I do have a bigger meal sometimes after work, I try not to eat anything after 6 p.m., 6.30. It's like my bottom line is just because I don't sleep well with a full stomach. I just don't feel well. Mm -hmm.